It was bitter, it was divisive, and it was high octane. After weeks of campaigning, the Conservative leadership contest has ended. Liz Truss will be Britain's next Prime Minister. The results were announced earlier today in London. Truss received more than 81,000 votes. Her rival Rishi Sunak got 60,000. Honestly, it was a strange contest. Usually we ask, who is more popular in such an election? But this time, it was the opposite. People were asking, who is more unpopular? The early rounds of voting were dominated by Rishi Sunak. Most Tory MPs supported him, but the final round was all about grassroots support. Only party members were permitted to vote in this election, and that's where Liz Truss scored big. She campaigned on so-called traditional conservative values, something that she repeated again today. During this leadership campaign, I campaigned as a conservative, and I will govern as a conservative. <laughs> And my friends, we need to show that we will deliver over the next two years. I will deliver a bold plan to cut taxes and grow our economy. I will deliver on the energy crisis, dealing with people's energy bills, but also dealing with the long-term issues we have on energy supply. Where does that leave Rishi Sunak? His campaign was very energetic. His policy has also made more economic sense than Liz Truss. So why did he lose? Like I said, grassroots support. Sunak's campaign was always going to be a long shot. His opponents portrayed him as snobbish and anti-poor. Normally, that's a prerequisite in Britain. This is a country where prime ministers inevitably come from a handful of elite schools, so money alone was not the problem. Perhaps race was. Rishi Sunak believed Britain was ready for an Asian prime minister, hence his slogan, ready for Rishi, but the Tory electorate just gave him a reality check. It's hard to say what awaits him in the future. Sunak has said he's open to joining Liz Truss's cabinet. He tweeted his support for her after the results were announced. If so, we'll have more clarity tomorrow. It is a big day for Liz Truss. She will normally, formally, in fact, be appointed as the next Prime Minister of Britain. And that process is quite interesting. Usually, the Queen appoints new leaders at the Buckingham Palace, but this time the Queen is not in town. She is at a Scottish residence in Balmoral. So tomorrow, both Boris Johnson and Liz Truss will fly down to meet her. First, Boris Johnson will resign, and then the Queen will invite Liz Truss to form the government. And after that, the action shifts back to London. Truss will announce her cabinet ministers and on Wednesday she will hold her first cabinet meeting. I know it's a privilege to become prime minister. But this is the worst possible time. Let me list out Liz Truss's challenges. Inflation is at more than 10%. That's a 40-year high. Energy bills are set to rise 80%. The war in Ukraine continues to drag on. Europe is threatening legal action over Brexit technicalities. Scotland wants another referendum. The pandemic side effects continue to linger. And Truss herself remains deeply unpopular. And let me show you what a recent poll found. 52% Britons expect her to be a terrible or poor prime minister. Only 12% expect her to be good. And remember, this was during the election. Most leaders often peak before or during the election. For Liz Truss, it is the opposite. She has inherited a divided and embattled Conservative Party. She's also inherited a country in crisis. The question is, what does she plan to do with it? These are her major policy promises. Truss is opposed to energy rationing this winter. Instead, she has promised to expand energy production. How will she do that? She hasn't explained it yet. Truss has also ruled out windfall taxes on oil and gas companies. Apparently, it will stifle capitalism. What about normal business taxes? She's proposing to cut them. Truss has promised tax cuts worth $44 billion annually. The idea is to incentivize businesses to revive productivity. And finally, immigration. Liz Truss is a proud supporter of the Rwanda plan. Under this scheme, the UK can dump asylum seekers in Rwanda and Africa. In fact, Truss wants to expand this list. She wants more countries to deport migrants too. And most of these policies are hardline conservative. Experts are split on whether they will work or not. What about foreign policy? Truss's relationship with Europe is one to watch out for. She had initially opposed the Brexit vote, but now she is a fully baptized Brexiteer. On the campaign trail, she was combative towards Europe. Listen to this. President Macron, friend or foe? The, the jury's out. But if I, if I, if I, if I, if I become, if I become prime minister, I will judge him on deeds, not words. 
Now, those comments did not go down well. Just to give you some background, Britain and France are close Western allies, so the jury is out is not exactly a diplomatic answer. But then again, that's Liz Truss's style for you. She has shown the appetite for a fight. Take China, for instance. Liz Truss is promising a full review of British policy on China. She wants to officially designate China as a national security threat. So indications are she's a China hawk. The same applies to Russia. Truss is expected to continue Boris Johnson's tough position. Even the Kremlin knows this. Their spokesperson said he was expecting nothing positive from her. What about India? How should New Delhi see her election as Prime Minister? Frankly, it's a tough one. Truss is hawkish on China, which is good news for India, but she is equally, if not more, hawkish on Russia. In April this year, she visited India as Britain's foreign minister. Two things stood out in her engagements. Number one, she saw a lot of potential in trade ties. Number two, she singled out India as an important Indo-Pacific partner. And that's good news for both sides. India and Britain have been discussing a free trade deal since January 2022. Under Liz Truss, there could be progress in talks. As for the Indo-Pacific, it's a wait and watch. Will she continue Boris Johnson's specific pivot? Or will she be more focused on Europe? We'll have more clarity in the next couple of months. But either way, it promises to be a tough tenure for Britain's third female prime minister. Vyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.